We're going to move on to the next um, thing now. We would usually have been live in a venue, and this year we decided to be in Leeds Art Gallery. Um, there's a lot of work being done around making Leeds Art Gallery much, much more inclusive, and um, that's been going on for a while. And we're going to hear now, I interviewed uh, Sarah Brown, who, well, you'll hear all about it in the video. Um, so if we can cue that video, please. Hi there, and welcome once again to Leeds Art Gallery here for Out in the Past. We're really, really lucky this morning to have Sarah from Leeds Art Galleries with us. Um, she's our principal keeper. Sarah, are you happy to just tell us a little bit about what it is that you do at the Art Gallery for us? Yeah, of course. Thank you, Councillor Bithell. I'm delighted to welcome delegates to Leeds Art Gallery. And I'm very aware that normally we would be welcoming you all through the doors and you'd have the chance to see, you know, to be experiencing the Outing the Past conference in our Henry Moore Lecture Theatre, which is at the heart of Leeds Art Gallery. And you'd have the opportunity to see the exhibition, uh, Natural Encounters, um, and experience some of the extraordinary collection that we have here in Leeds. Thank you. Um, so for those people that have been to our Out in the Past before, we've previously done it at City Museum. So can you explain to us why Leeds Art Gallery is the perfect place for us to have transferred over to this year? Leeds Art Gallery is in the heart of the city centre of Leeds and it is a gallery that hosts one of the strongest collections of painting and sculpture in the UK, particularly strong in sculpture through our partnership with the Henry Moore Foundation. And one of the, um, I suppose, one of the key strands that I've been re really clear about Leeds Art Gallery in the time that I've been responsible is to ensure that the gallery has become much more inclusive and more diverse. And I suppose you could say that galleries previously haven't traditionally been one where audiences are at the heart of what we do. And so I think the opportunity for us to host a nationally significant event like Outing, Apart, Outing the Past that explores um, queering the collection and thinking about uh, queer artists and our relationship with audiences today. Um, I'm really keen that we sort of have the opportunity to share some of the work that my colleagues have done to ensure that we are a more diverse and inclusive gallery. It's really, really great to hear that we're making those steps. Are you okay to just talk us through quickly how we're making those improvements? So I think, I think, I suppose that the strands of the gallery are obviously the collection I've mentioned, the temporary exhibitions, but also our public programme and our engagement strand, which from formal education to senior citizens and youth engagement is at the heart of what we do. So with exhibitions, one of the, the exhibitions that if you were actually in the gallery today in real life, you'd have the chance to see Natural Encounters, which is a show that explores artists' relationships to the natural world. And it's an exhibition that we really worked on at the beginning of the pandemic and includes almost entirely made up of work from our collection but spans over 400 years of history. And one of the things that we're sort of we're keen to unpick is our relationship, how important during this pandemic all of our relationship has been to the natural world. And for some of us um, who don't have access to green spaces or for some of us that for whom green spaces and our mental health is incredibly important. Um, there's an opportunity to hear from the artist included in the exhibition, Shade Misha, whose work, It Takes Time, explores just that, explores their relationship to the natural, to the natural landscape um, and their own identity in... in um, in the landscape. I love that you're bringing the art gallery really topical and really exciting exhibits that are really relevant to now. Um, 
that's really interesting to me and I'm excited at some point to be able to get back in and see them once we're back open. Um, in terms of today, we're real excited to be coming together in order to hear about all sorts of different facets of LGBT plus history. Um, and we've got an incredible programme. One of the things that we've added this year is to look around some of the bits of the art gallery um, that are relevant. So what special queer bits of Leeds Art Gallery are we going to get to experience today? So the films you'll hear, you'll have the opportunity to hear from curators, from the artists, from our youth engagement um, officer who's working with young LGBT um, uh, members of the community. And also an artist, um, we've included a film that talks about the artist Marlo Moss, who was an artist whose work, Construction in Steel, is a very sort of abstract, geometric, modernist work. But they were an artist who definitely um, now would be described as, as a queer artist, but working in the 50s and coming from Paris to St Ives, which was the heart of the kind of British... Uh, I guess, modernist history of, of sculpture and painting, artists like Barbara Hepworth and Ben Nicholson, um, and actually was very excluded from that, from that story. And in some time ago, 2014, we, we curated an exhibition of their work and really sort of told that story that hadn't been really told before alongside an artist, very different work, photographer, called Claude Cahoon and there's an opportunity to see a kind of behind the scenes putting together the exhibition that draws upon that really significant work in our collection. Thank you Sarah that sounds incredibly interesting uh, I'm really excited to be able to see those later and you will actually be able to see those videos during the different intervals that we have during the day between our more formal um, talks. Thank you so much for introducing Leeds Art Galleries to us, Sarah. Um, and I hope you enjoy the rest of our programme. Thank you very much. And we're delighted to welcome you all today. And I hope you have a really exciting programme and enjoy your experience virtually of visiting Leeds Art Gallery. Thank you very much to Sarah for taking the time to uh, record that video with me. You might have noticed that it wasn't, in fact, just a remarkably fast costume change but it was in fact a pre-recorded video. So I'd just like to take a moment actually at this time to thank two people who have done absolute wonders in terms of bringing what is usually me and a, couple, a few other people bumbling around in Leeds uh, museums onto an online platform. The work that's gone into it to make it a safe space, to make it flow, to turn me and Sarah's ramblings into a succinct interview video. Um, has been absolutely immense. So to Kat and Will, thank you so much um, for the work that you have done. Now, hearing about the art gallery kind of makes me a little bit sad that we're not actually there. Um, I mean, it's wonderful to still be able to bring this to you guys in this format at this time. Um, but the idea was that we'd be able to see and go around some of those. So I'm really pleased that we have got those videos later on and I would urge that if you do need to pop for the loo, you do it real quick so you can come back and have a look at the different um, the different exhibits that are on show. And should you, once all this is over, um, want to go and see any of the items that are shown today, um, Leeds Art Galleries is free. Leeds Art Gallery, sorry, is free. Um, and you're more than welcome to attend once we reopen after lockdown. Um, we're really lucky in the range of speeches we've got today. And I think the next one is one that is particularly important given the current climate um, and also particularly important given our history. And it's only recently come out in the news that there um, is a call for more HIV testing and the potential that there's been issues with that because of the lockdown. It's already been mentioned by Owain, the issues with isolation in LGBT people. Um, so there is a lot of stuff relating to our NHS, which of course is one of our, or in my opinion, is one of our most important institutions as a nation um, and one of our most valuable institutions. Um, 
it's really come into its own this year. I think there's nobody in the entire country that would say uh, that the NHS deserved anything less than as much funding as it needs in order to um, do the incredible work that it's doing. Um, 